y'all, it's another getting real with Ashley Dawn. I'm Ashley Dawn and I want to get real with you. So this morning when I was getting ready for church, I just had like the sweetest little thought in my mind. Like I needed a band-aid, okay? This is getting real with Ashley Dawn, so I'm just going to be real. Um, but I needed a band-aid. I had a biopsy on my stomach um, last week and I have to change a band-aid every day. So I was looking for a Band-Aid and I have my own bathroom. My mom has her own bathroom and I can never find anything that I need. And I tend to be a little bit fancy as my mom and daddy would call it. Like I like nicer things, you know, like they're getting the dollar um, shampoo and conditioner from like Walmart and I'm like, oh no, I need the $5 shampoo and conditioner you know what I mean like I've always been I've always had expensive taste and expensive to us like not necessarily you know whatever so I have like my little fancy products and I have a product for everything like I have shampoo conditioner leave-in conditioner um, treatment for your hair hair mask face mask foot mask hand mask um, mask for your body care you know like I do all the things my mom is very simple like peroxide alcohol toothpaste like just very simple my mom and daddy have always been simple that song by Leonard Skinner simple man yes that's like my daddy's song and they're just simple but every time I need something I walk my little self downstairs I go in her little bathroom hi mom and I look for whatever I need and wouldn't you know it's exactly in the place that she put it it's exactly organized me everything's right there me on the other hand I have like those like shelving cabinets and I have like all my hair accessories in one and all my hair products in another and all my brushes I have a whole little drawer just for my brushes like I tend to overcomplicate things I've always been like that and my mom is just very simple, very to the point. She's not very fancy. Um, and she'd say that. My dad would say that. They're just simple people. And growing up, I was a lot more simple than I am now. It seems like the older I get, the more complicated I get. But it just hit my spirit something. And I was like, I need to do a getting real about this. Because take it back to the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve literally had everything they could ever need. God was supplying it for them. They didn't have no clothes on their butt booty naked, but they didn't need them. What happens? The one thing that God told them not to take, they wanted. They always wanted more. They weren't happy with what they had. They were simple until they weren't. I a little girl was simple until I wasn't. I was happy with my spam and you know my fried spam and crisp potato rolls and sometimes it was even a sandwich. It was like a piece of bread but I was happy with my fried spam. I loved my fried spam. I was happy with my fried scrapple. I was happy with my Kraft mac and cheese 10 cents. At one point, I was happy with some 10 cent ramen noodle. Now, I despise ramen noodles and like pho is like this big thing, like this little bowl. It's, it's ramen noodles. It's a fancy ramen noodles. I ain't eating that. And I do have a food blog. Um, if you're following, thank you. If not, you need to. Um, you don't have to, but you're missing out on some pretty cool stuff. But anyway, now, you know, I want to have sushi and I want to have caviar and I want to have, I've only had caviar once. Um, and I want to have escargot and I want to have this and I want to have that. I have complicated myself. God didn't complicate me. I complicated me. I wanted extra things. I wanted fancier things, right? Like my car. I did a video a couple weeks ago and I said, I would like a new car. My car is fine. My car is nice. I have worked my butt off. I have fixed this dang car up, but it has a whole new front end. Like I love this car. Is it new? No. Does it have leather seats? No. Does it have all the bells and whistles? Also, no. But it gets me everywhere I need to go and it's got AC. And I lived a lot of years without AC, so I'm grateful for it. 
But it's like we overcomplicate things. We want something better. We want something newer. The new iPhone just came out, the iPhone 13, and I have the iPhone 11, and the iPhone 13 camera is really nice, and so I start thinking in my head, like, I know I don't need it. I know I don't want it, but then I'm like, ooh, my videos might be better. Ooh, I might have better content for my YouTube and for my Instagram and for my social medias. And then I got to draw myself back and be like, Ashley Dawn, does social media really matter that much? No, like, yes, part of my job is social media and I get paid to post and I get paid to go all these different places and, and companies reach out to me to advertise, to be in their commercials, to market for them, whatever, uh, to be their PR person, to do customer service. But, and yes, that does pay my bills, but is it necessary? Is it necessary to live? Do I need it? Is it the air that I breathe? No. The air that I breathe is Jesus and the presence of Jesus. But how often do we, as people, I'm not the only one here, want something else? We think, oh, I have that something else. We overcomplicate. We're like, well, I need this and I need this. I can't just have, you know, underwear for every day of the week. I need underwear for every day of the year. I need 365 pairs of underwear. I don't need five pairs of underwear or seven pairs of underwear or 20 pairs of underwear. I need hundreds of pairs of underwear. I don't need one hairbrush. I need 25 hairbrushes because each hairbrush does something different. We overcomplicate our lives. We overcomplicate things that we really don't need to. My mom has everything she needs. Does she have everything she wants? No, but she has everything she needs. And if... I was, you know, asking her, she'd say, the only thing I want is my husband. She's a simple woman and she is my role model and my greatest, my greatest thing and person that I aspire to be. I want to be like that. I don't want to be bogged down with the things of this world. And, you know, I was talking to another friend the other day and we were talking about, you know, the Bible tells us not to store our treasure on earth where moths can destroy. Have you ever seen a really cute outfit eaten away by moths that was stuck in a closet, never brought out, never worn, and now it has holes all over it? I have. Let me take these off because there's like a glare. Um, I have. Have you ever, you know, my car was broken into several times and my purse was stolen. And so thieves can steal things that you have. Um, and the Bible says that. You know, you store your treasure on earth, thieves can steal it. Moths can eat it. Time can damage it, right? Things fall apart. Clothing disintegrates when it gets to a certain age. Our bodies disintegrate. They deteriorate. They grow. They age. Excuse me. Sleepy. Um, but when we look at it and we're like, okay, so the Bible tells us not to store our treasure on earth. The Bible tells us to store our treasure in heaven. Why does the Bible say store our treasure in heaven? Well, if you store your treasure in heaven, it can't be taken away from you. If you store your treasure in the lives that you impact, in the lives that you touch, in the people that you help, when you get to heaven, it'll still be there. If you store your treasure in your closet, which I really love clothing and dressing cute, as you can probably tell because you probably haven't seen the same outfit twice in any of my videos. I like clothes a lot, sometimes too much, and sometimes I can overcomplicate things. And even when I'm getting ready to go somewhere, like I'm getting ready to go to church and I'm like, oh, what am I gonna wear? Does it really matter what I wear? Like in the grand scheme of things? No, it doesn't. Do people judge you for what you wear? Yeah, sometimes. But if they're judging you for what you wear, they're missing out on a great person. It's their fault. I've just learned by watching my mom's example, you can live with really minimal things. And I, you can live very simply and still be happy. My mom is one of the happiest people that I know. And she doesn't even have a car. She doesn't drive. She's never had a car. She did have a motorcycle um, when I was little. But she walks everywhere. And she's happy. She doesn't complain about walking. She likes walking. I'll tell her, like, hey, you want me to give you a ride? She's like, no, I like walking. Like, she likes walking. She's not complaining that she's walking. She wears very simple clothing. And I'll say, hey, you want me to take you shopping? Like, I'll get you some really nice clothes. And she's like, no, I don't need them. 
I got I got one pair of boots or she has two pair of boots she has work boots and she has going out boots I can't even tell you how many pairs of boots I have because I got so many I just got a new pair the other day from Walmart and they're real cute thank you Arian for telling me about them because she posted a thing and I was like oh I like those and she's like girl they're on sale but I've got so much stuff that honestly when I'm getting ready sometimes I can't find anything I have overcomplicated my life where my mom has like I don't even know maybe 10 shirts maybe five pairs of jeans two pairs of boots very simple like her closet is very simple I have four closets and I still have stuff under my bed, in my dresser. Like, I have stuff everywhere, all over the house. In every single closet, you can find some piece of clothing. When she's getting ready, that woman is ready in 10 minutes, and she looks awesome. It takes me like an hour to get ready. If I'm going somewhere that I really want to look cute, if I'm just, you know, hopping in the car, I can get ready quick. But, like, I have overcomplicated my life. I don't need all the clothes that I have. I don't need all the shoes that I have. I don't need 25 brushes. Yes, I was a cosmetologist for many years and I did hair and so I tend to do things kind of the way I was taught and you use one brush for one thing, one brush for another thing, one brush for another thing. But I don't need everything that I have. And sometimes, this is getting real, if I'm being real, sometimes even though I don't need everything that I have, I want more. How crazy is that, that somebody that has been so blessed and has so much can want more? How is it that somebody with a vehicle can want a different vehicle? How is it that somebody with a house can want a different house? Somebody that has clothes can want more clothes, can want... Listen, I was talking to my friend, Carolina, yesterday, and I was like, you know, I did a TikTok, and it was like, I, I don't, don't need, need it. I don't need it. I want to get it. A new fall wardrobe. Like, and it was a joke. But honestly, like if I'm being real, I would love to get some new little fall clothes. Maybe like a little jacket. Maybe like a little hat. Like a little bandana. Like, it's getting to be not 100 degrees. It's like 80 degrees. So that's like fall in Florida. And, you know, my head starts going there. And I'm like, whoa, girl, pump those brakes. You got clothes. Go in your dresser. Go in your closet. You got clothes. You don't need no more clothes. Stop overcomplicating your life. Stop wanting more. Stop wanting what you don't have. Be happy with what you do have. The Bible says over and over and over and over again to be content with what we have. And I preach that message. But so many times I have to preach it to myself. You don't need it. If you don't have it, you don't need it. And sometimes even if you could get it, you also don't need it. Yesterday, me and my friend Carolina went to a taco festival and we're like, well, how many tickets do we need? And I told her after the fact, I was like, you know what? The food wasn't that good. But I'm like, we could have walked around, looked at the different types of food that they had and then decided what we needed. But we didn't do that. We just bought our tickets and then went in there. Well, guess what? They don't give you a refund if you don't use your tickets. So when we were coming out, there were these really nice girls. Can I get by? Yes, I can. There were these really nice girls that had extra tickets and gave those extra tickets to my friend Carolina because they're like, oh, we got extra tickets because they couldn't get a re like a refund on them, a refund. A refund. That's funny. <laughs> they couldn't get a refund. They couldn't get a refund. So they just gave them away. If they would have looked at what they needed, they wouldn't have bought more than what they needed. If I would look at what I needed, I wouldn't buy more than what I need. Sometimes I have to get my little head and focus on what God wants for me and stop focusing on the media, stop focusing on marketing, stop focusing on advertising. Like every single commercial you see is trying to sell you what you don't need. It's trying to sell you something that will overcomplicate your life. Do you need it? No, you don't. If you needed it, you'd probably have it because you would need it and then you would go get it. Like I needed a Band-Aid, so I went to my mom's medicine cabinet and I got Band-Aids. And if she didn't have them, I would have went to the store and I would have bought Band-Aids. Why? Because when you need something, you go get it. If you don't have it, you probably don't need it. 
I know it's the craziest concept ever and I'm hoping that this video will really encourage people that are struggling, that are wanting things that they don't have, that are um, maybe not being thankful for what they do have, not being grateful for what they do have. Like I pride myself, I really do, in always being thankful and always being grateful and never taking anything for granted. But if I'm being real with myself, I'm not perfect, nobody is. Sometimes I do take things for granted. Sometimes I do forget what I have and then I'm like, well, I need that. No, you don't, you don't need it. You don't need it. Repeat with me, I don't need it. Sometimes we don't need it. Sometimes we just need to embrace the simple life and be happy with it. We just need to embrace a simple life and be happy with it. God has great things in store for us. And if we would just embrace where we are, it says in the Bible that if, to, um, if you are faithful with a little, you'll be faithful with a lot. Sometimes we're so busy wanting a lot that we forget to be faithful with the little. Let's be faithful with the little. Let's stop overcomplicating our lives and wanting things that we don't need and wanting things that we already have, but wanting a newer version of it, wanting a better version of it. Like, let's just be grateful for what we have, where we are. Let's be simple, like my mama. Let's be happy with what we have. And if we have a lot, let's give what we don't need away. Let's donate. This morning I was getting ready and I was looking through my stuff and I was like, oh, I have a friend that would probably like that. I have a friend that would probably like that. I have a friend that would probably like that. I should probably give some things away. I don't need all these things. My house is a mess right now. Like this is getting real. I'm being real. My house is a mess, like a straight up mess and I need to clean it. And I need to go through the stuff that I'm not using and I need to give it away to somebody who will be blessed by it and who will use it. I need to do that. So that's what I'm going to do after I go to church and after I spend time with my friend Ryan. Um, I am going to clean my house. And I am going to do the things that I need to do. Be grateful for the things that I have and not overcomplicate my life. And I encourage you to do the same. I hope you have a great day at church. I hope you know how loved you are. I hope you know that you are seen, that you are celebrated, and that you are loved. You are oh so very loved. God loves you. I love you too. He will always love you more. Obviously, he's got more love to give. But you don't need it. If you're stressing over it, if you're thinking that your life would be better if you had it, you don't need it. Your life is good because you're in it. God's going to give you everything that you have need of, and he's going to take care of you, and he's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. It's all going to be okay, and that's found in Philippians if you want to look that scripture up. I had it written on my um, kitchen because when I would get to stress and I'd be like, okay, God, I need you to pay these bills because I don't know how I'm going to. Okay, God, I need you to provide this need because I don't know how it's going to get provided for if it's not for you if it's not from you. Right now I'm praying for some miracles for some family members that got some not so good news from doctors. And I'm like, okay, God, I know I can trust you. Okay, God, I know that you will work it all out for their good and your glory. God's going to give us everything that we need. He's not going to give us everything that we want. And sometimes the things that we want, we really don't need. And if we had them, they would overcomplicate our life. So let's just be grateful for what we have, where we are, and who we're with, okay? I hope you have the best day ever. I love you. Catch you in the next one.